11 sets who are resitting or sitting in section 2 exam. Uh, could you go to period, uh, period 5, uh, to room 5, please, this afternoon for your uh, work there? Uh, athletics, years 7 to 10, there's an athletics uh, uh, competition tomorrow. And you can check the notice board in the P area, please, to see if you're involved in that uh, competition. Good luck to you. Uh, year 12 on the UCAS conference today, could you make sure, please, at the beginning of period 2, you go to the uh, dining hall uh, to depart, thank you, and I uh, hope you have a, a useful day, make sure you make the most of that opportunity. It's an important convention to uh, give you some information on uh, what you might wish to do next year, in, or the year after, rather, in terms of university, and there's lots of other uh, employers, uh, there's gap year organisations there that you might find of value. So thank you to Mr. Brough for organising that. Uh, out and about on the field, can I remind you to put the litter in the bins, please? Uh, there is uh, a little bit of litter floating around. Uh, there's plenty of bins around, so please put the litter in the bins. And uh, the field probably be okay today for use. Obviously, if it starts to rain, uh, then please keep off the field at break and lunchtime. Uh, this morning, uh, we've got a presentation by six members of Year 12 who took part in a Formula One competition that you may have heard of. In February, they won their regional competition at Exeter, and they were the Rookie of the Year. And then they went to the national finals recently, and they also won the Rookie of the Year award. And uh, six of them, Jack McLaren, uh, very apt name, I suppose, for the Formula One competition. Cameron Firm, Jacob Lang, Brian Atwood, uh, Will Breeds, and Max Skelding are going to give us a presentation this morning. Uh, but I'd like to invite them to the stage to present them with their trophies to start with. So, if I can come, Jim, thank you. largest science, technology, engineering and maths challenge in the world, with over 9 million students from over 34 countries participating. In this programme, teams of 3 to 6 students use industry level, three-dimensional computer-aided design and computer-aided mechanics software and computational fluid dynamics to design, analyse, test, manufacture and race. Miniature CO2-powered Bolsworth Formula 1 cars. However, the F1 in Schools programme involves much more than just designing and manufacturing a car. The car and racing account for just a third of the total awardable marks. The rest of the marks are awarded for our pit display, portfolio, verbal presentation and engineering interview. The challenge requires the students to collaborate with industry partners within the context of their project to learn about engineering, principles such as physics, aerodynamics, design, manufacture, leadership, teamwork, media skills and project management, and then apply them in a practical, imaginative, and competitive and exciting way. Just like industry product, projects, they must also incorporate marketing and team presentation activities. Students have a short-term goal of working on a project over many months to participate in the challenge you may see them representing their country at the highest level. To help explain the competition, we will now show you a video produced by the Sky Sports F1 channel covering the F20 schools international finals held alongside the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in 2012. Last week in Abu Dhabi, the spectacular Ferrari World played host to the F1 in Schools World Championships. The combination of competitions held all over the world to encourage kids from 9 to 19 years of age in everything from physics and aerodynamics to sponsorship and marketing. Well, it's primarily a competition based around STEM, which is science, technology, engineering and maths, and I get kids excited about these subjects, which typically it's go out. So what we're going to do is take the whole world of Formula One and put it into the classroom. So instead of three or four hundred people in the factory, you've got four to six in the team actually designing, analysing, testing, making, racing a Formula One car. And the engineering 
and the maths and the science that goes into it is unbelievable. This is our 12th year, it's our 8th World Finals. Uh, we've got 40 countries around the world doing it, we're adding another 7 next year, and we've got 23,000 schools all around the world taking part. These guys are exceptional. I mean, they, they'll go on from here and they'll go into university, they'll probably come out first and then they'll just hopefully be cherry-picked by the Formula 1 teams. And if it's not Formula 1 that they enter, it might be the supply chain and other automotive engineering companies. It's a really good learning experience for the, for the youngsters. Uh, I mean, looking at what they're doing, they're doing it right from the marketing all the way down to the engineering. Aerodynamics uh, plays a big part in these cars, which obviously is uh, key in F1 as well. So as a learning experience, it, it's first class. Apart from being extremely intelligent to be in Formula 1, you need to have a passion and no doubt all of these kids have got it. You know, they, they must spend months and months getting to the standard. And that's what we need in Formula 1. We need people with the you know, Formula 1 passion burns inside them and you can see it when you speak to the kids. The actual racing is done over a 20 metre drag strip. The balsa wood cars are fired using compressed gas cylinders. The aerodynamics of the cars and reaction times of the competitors are all important. It's amazing because um, all this stuff that we learn in this competition can be applied to things that we learn um, for the future, like future careers that we want. Yeah. And that's why it's such an invaluable learning opportunity. Like, we're so grateful for all this competition is given to us. The event attracted big names from up and down the paddock, came to see what the engineers of the future have to offer. Uh, the level of detail that, they, uh, that they're working to is, is incredible, in fact. Uh, it's the first time I've really seen the cars up close um, and the, the range of uh, areas that they're looking at, the CFD, the manufacturing, the rapid prototype, uh, is, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm very surprised, it's uh, very impressive. It's, it's outstanding really when you look at the, the age of the, the people involved and the resource that they've got. And I think it's not only that, I think what impresses me most is that they're doing it in the spare time, you know, it's not something that is part of their curriculum. Um, they're actually going out of the way and, and, and putting all the spare time in it and I think it's just really, really amazing and the, and the, and the standard of work is really outstanding for, for, for kids really of that age. Hopefully it we'll get some kind of, you know, a pipeline of, of, of kids coming through eventually and, and, you know, young talented engineers with a bit of passion and that's exactly what we need. The grand final was between Australian team Colt Fusion and Bobcat from Canada. An extraordinary achievement to be the last two from an initial 23,000 schools. The glitzy prize giving ceremony celebrated the children's achievements across many different categories, including best website and best use of social media, as well as the more traditional prizes for fastest car and best engineering. Cold Fusion were crowned world champions, taking the trophy and incredible grand prize and scholarship to the City of London University. And on Saturday morning, Bernie and Adrian Newey were on hand to congratulate the deserved winners. Look out for these faces in the F1 paddock in the near future. I hope the video gives you a sense of the scale of competition and professionalism required from participants. Many parallels can be drawn between competition and Formula One. The margins on the project are tiny, for example. At the national finals, a tenth of a second separate 18 of the 30 competitors, and with some cars separated by less than a thousandth of a second. As a result, it was clear that the competition is very well respected within the F1 paddock and is an ideal route to F1 engineering. What also comes across is the hard work of the participants. Competitors have to give up a lot of their own time to be successful in order to reach the top. After seeing this feature about F1 in schools, I approached Mr. Downs about setting up a team. After we were given the green light, I then selected a team of motivated and talented individuals. I then assigned roles and we began the project. The first thing considered was the car design and then the aerodynamic concepts we wanted to implement on the car. As the cars are powered by thrust from a carbon dioxide canister and travel along a 20 metre track, the primary consideration is to minimise drag. After we had discussed the car design we wanted to implement, we had to check that these components would comply with all of the 100 different technical regulations that our car must comply with. Next, the design engineers designed the car on a computer-aided design software SOLIDWORKS. 
SOLIDWORKS is used by over 2 million engineers for more than 165,000 businesses worldwide. Once the car is designed on SOLIDWORKS, it has to be manufactured on CNC routers, as we do not have this capability in school. We had to search for other places to manufacture our car. We sent letters and called a number of different manufacturing centres before, before we found one which met our required standards. With the car completed, the team then began to work on the element, other elements of the project. We had to compile a portfolio, design a pit display, and prepare a verbal presentation. With everything completed, we were ready for the competition. In order to run the project funds, it had to be raised. There are significant expenses in the manufacturing of the car. Purchasing components to be able to travel, accommodation at the venue, like Formula One sponsorship, was required. We attempted to gain sponsorship from a number of different companies. <coughs> Fortunately, we were able to obtain financial sponsorship from Renishaw and Stone King. We met with these companies to discuss how they could help us. It was very important that we collaborated with the industry throughout the project. As a result of winning the best rookie prize at the Southwest Regional Finals, we attended the national finals of the competition, held at the Big Bank Fair at the Excel Arena in London. The event was very busy and we had many people coming over to our stand and asking questions. People were particularly interested in the wind tunnel that we had built. At the national finals, the first event judged was the verbal presentation, which we felt went very well. The judges asked a number of questions and were very impressed with our initiative and independence. We scored the top three marks for the presentation and as a result, we were nominated for the verbal presentation award. After the presentation, we had our engineering interview. We were tested on the finish of our car, our application varied on our principles and our testing methods. The judges liked our new car design and expected a quick time. The next event was the racing. We were very excited to see the time that our car could achieve. Before the cars were released by the punching of a CO2 canister, Jacob had to wait for the five red lights to turn green, and then press a button as soon as possible which releases the car. During this type of racing, Jacob's reaction time is not particularly important. After being interviewed, it was time to put our car to test on the track. The first three runs achieved the car's fastest ever time of 1.179 seconds. With its final run completing the 20 metre track in 1.146 seconds, we were placed in second position. Once all our competitors had completed their track runs, we placed third overall. The team was ecstatic with this result, as the time achieved was a, by our new car was a big improvement on our original car. The next morning, our pit display and portfolio were judged. This is followed by the final event of the competition. For the of the competition, knockout racing. Two teams race on the track twice, and the team with the fastest time progressed to the next round, with the other team eliminated. The key difference, however, is that this time the sum of both reaction time and competitor, and the time taken to complete the track. The competition started at the last 16 stage, but we progressed to the next round with a cumulative time of 1.398 seconds. In the quarterfinal, our car was timed at completing the 20 metre track in 0.998 seconds, the fastest of the event. However, since Matt's reaction time in the race was 0.4 seconds, we were unfortunately eliminated. Once the, ju the judges had compiled their scores, the award for ceremony began. As the event was such an exceptional competitive event, many of the teams there were vet veterans, with their schools having competed in the competition for many years. We were thrilled to be awarded the best rookie prize. This was a fantastic achievement. Next year, we will hopefully set up a blood time team for students currently in year eight. We'll be able to give you more details about this later on in the year. For our own team, we'll be competing again next year. We plan to raise much more money by sponsorship, and to produce an even faster car, with our target of going under 1.1 seconds. We have high ambitions of reaching the national final, international finals in 2014. If you would like to keep up to date by our progress, please like our Facebook page. Finally, we would like to thank all of the staff in the school who have helped us on the project. Thank you for listening. and thank you very much indeed uh, to the staff, Mr. Jones, Mr. Downs, Mr. Gordon, 
uh, for helping out to another round of applause to the team. Thank you. set up a, a rookie team in school uh, next year so we will continue uh, with this and if anyone who's interested in the audience uh, should look at their Facebook page and make contact with them and uh, I'm sure there's a, a number of budding engineers who'd like to get involved in the future. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we we'll wait patiently to dismiss. Thank you. Well there's one final note, sorry, it is that the school nurse Abby Dunn will be in today at 1.30 and she'll be upstairs on the upper corridor in the RE office. Thank you very much. <laughs> Guys, you're